In my recent videos, I've been digging into loads of undesigned coincidences and how they back up different parts of biblical history. Just to jog your memory, an undesigned coincidence is when two or more parts of the Bible casually fit together and help explain each other in a way that doesn't look to be designed. It's not what you'd expect from made-up stories, but it's exactly the kind of thing you'd find in truthful and detailed accounts. Be sure to check out the playlist at the end screen, and you can find a lot more details. But in today's example, we're looking at Isaiah 38, where we find the story of King Hezekiah's illness and subsequent recovery. Then, in Isaiah 39, we get a glimpse of envoys from Babylon paying a visit to King Hezekiah to congratulate him on getting better. Interestingly, there's a similar story in 2 Kings 20, but it seems like one account might have borrowed from the other, or maybe they both draw from a common source. Anyway, here's the account from Isaiah 39, 1 through 2. It reads, At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent envoys with letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And Hezekiah welcomed them gladly, and he showed them his treasure house, the silver, the gold, the spices, the precious oil, his whole armory, all that was found in his storehouses. There was nothing in his house or in his realm that Hezekiah did not show them. So here's the scoop. King Hezekiah proudly flaunts his wealth to the Babylonian envoys, showing off all his treasures. But here's the kicker. His pride ends up earning him a prophecy of doom. Let's take a look at verses 3 through 7 for the full story. It reads, Then Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say? And from where did they come to you? Hezekiah said, they have come to me from a far country, from Babylon. He said, What have they seen in your house? Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing in my storehouses that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And some of your own sons who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. King Hezekiah's response to the prophecy is pretty telling. He's more concerned about his own peace and security, thinking to himself, well, at least there will be peace and security in my days. Now, here's the lowdown. The stories in both Isaiah and 2 Kings suggest that Hezekiah got sick during Sennacherib's invasion of Judah, right before the outcome of that whole mess. In both versions, God assures Hezekiah that he's going to pull through and that the city will be safe from the Assyrians. Just check out Isaiah 38, 6 and 2 Kings 20, verse 6. So those Babylonian envoys swing by after Hezekiah bounces back, and the Assyrian threat is nipped in the bud. Now, let's zoom in on another text, 2 Kings 18, 13 through 16. Be sure to pay close attention. It reads, In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah king of Judah sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. And the king of Assyria required of Hezekiah king of Judah 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the doorposts that Hezekiah, king of Judah, overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Now, hold on just a second. Hezekiah just handed over a humiliating tribute to the king of Assyria, giving away all of the silver found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. He even had to strip the gold from the temple doors and doorposts. Now, how in the world? Not long after this embarrassing ordeal, is he showing off all his riches to Babylonian envoys? You could just brush this off as another Bible contradiction, or you could join me in a little detective work to uncover a solution, a solution that leads to yet another fascinating undesigned coincidence. Now, let's flip over to Second Chronicles for the inside scoop. This book tells us the tale of Sennacherib's army getting wiped out by the angel of the Lord, a story that's also found in Isaiah and 2 Kings, though with some different words. After this jaw-dropping event, 2 Chronicles drops a very unique tidbit in chapter 32, verse 23. It reads, And many brought gifts to the Lord to Jerusalem and precious things to Hezekiah king of Judah, 
So he was exalted in the sight of all nations from that time onward. Ah, okay. Now, get this. Hezekiah ended up with a full treasury to flaunt in front of the Babylonian messengers by the time they got wind of his recovery. Now, what's interesting is that while Second Chronicles conveniently skips over the embarrassing tribute to the Assyrians, Second Kings gives us the full details on that, along with Hezekiah's flashy treasury display to the Babylonians. But oddly enough, it doesn't mention the gifts from other nations that came in later. But hold on. Isaiah's version doesn't even mention the tribute or the gifts. It just talks about Hezekiah showing off his hefty wealth. This unexpected alignment of details supports the historical truth of these events and strongly hints that one of our storytellers, either Isaiah or the Second Kings author, had some backstage access to Hezekiah's court cluing us into the visit of the Babylonian envoys. This story reads as if it's rooted in truth, not just some kind of pious fable. I hope you found this video helpful and this series on undesigned coincidences helpful. I'll be talking more about undesigned coincidences from the Old Testament in the future, so subscribe, tap the bell, and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.